Hello, my name's Tom, I play drums in Screw of Victory, and today I'm going to talk to you about the drums that I play. So if you've ever seen Screw of Victory before, you'll know that I actually play drums standing up, and there is a reason for that, so I'll go into that in a bit. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk to you through the individual elements of the drums that I use, uh, and why I play them like I do, and uh, the uses that we have for them in the band. So the reason that the drum kit came about this way is actually for a number of reasons, really. So initially when we first started out, we were actually a lot, of, quite a different band, actually. We were quite, we were quite quiet, so a lot of the songs were a lot slower than they are now. So, so really, initially, the reason that we got this sort of setup together was because, well, we wanted it to be a bit quieter. And obviously, you can't have a big drum kit around. It's not going to make yourselves much quieter, really, is it? So we decided to really, really scale it back really keep it to its absolute bare minimum and the kit's actually gone through a lot of kind of upgrades and, and changes throughout the years so initially I mean the, the whole kit came about from this floor tom here and this floor tom's a 14 inch by 14 inch it's a really old pearl exports um, floor tom to be honest it's nothing special but the way I tune it um, and the sort of heads I use on it and that gives it a really deep fat kind of growling almost like a kick drum sound which is what we're going for because essentially this is what it's being used for and the snare well originally we started out with quite a small snare it's probably about this this thick it's an old little piccolo snare three and a half inches by 14 and again that because it was so kind of small we decided yeah it's a lot quieter and it was a lot lot easier to cart about as well because it's so small and light so that was kind of what born what kind of gave birth to the drum kit as you, as you can see now. Originally, because we were so quiet, it meant that because it was so small, we could get into a lot of tight spaces. So we did a lot of open mics when we first started out to get ourselves, get ourselves out there. And it meant that we could cram into small spaces in pubs, small spaces in little, small venues. And if we wanted to go bigger, we could. We could, we could take it into a big stage and that would be absolutely fine. But really for me kind of the the absolute cornerstone as i said before is this floor tom and then the snare kind of i bought this of a friend of mine who plays in a band called Kovax, who are absolutely awesome so i'd definitely check them out but this is a lot deeper snare um, it's actually six and a half inches deep but it's actually lighter than the piccolo that i used to use the three and a half inch deep snare which means that even though it is thicker and bigger it's a wooden snare so it's a lot lighter so really it's exactly the same sort of thing to cart about so it didn't add any extra weight so really for us it was easy to pack into the back of a car I, mean, I was driving a tiny car at the time a Toyota Rigo and it fit everything in including Jamie's stuff as well so really that's the reason how the whole the whole drum kit came about so we've talked about the drums so we'll talk about the cymbals that I use now and again they've kind of changed throughout the years as well so when we first started start going at Scribble Victory I use what I had so initially I had a pair of hi-hats that were just begged borrowed and steal steeled stolen effectively so I had on the bottom it was a really heavy bottom hi-hat symbol it was a Sabian uh, double H rock hi-hat bottom it was really really heavy really heavy and the top was a Peisty 404 uh, black label um, that was also a hi-hat bottom as well so really, even though we were trying to play quieter, those cymbals were just, they just cut through everything. To some extent, that was great. In a live situation, it could cut through anything when we were trying to be loud, but being quiet, it just didn't work at all. So I thought, I better upgrade. So some people might say that I didn't really upgrade from that because Sabian and Peisty are two top mate cymbal manufacturers. I opted for Stag. And the reason I opted for Stag, I'm a massive fan of B20 bronze in the cymbals. And these are kind of a budget range. The, the Stag single hammered, the 14 inch medium hi hats, but they they just to me they sounded really really nice for the money. I think I paid about 100 100 quid for them, and for hi hat symbols that's dirt cheap. And they've been with me ever since. I've had them for probably about three and a half years, and they just for me they sound excellent. They record really well. They still cut through uh, when you're playing live, and also as well they just for the price you, the sounds just for me. Me personally, I, I love them. And sticking with Stag, I actually stuck with Stag, Stag on the, the 14 inch Crash as well. So this is a 14 inch medium Crash. And when I first started out, I actually had an old Istanbul. It was a 12 inch Splash that was, uh, I think I bought it off um, a guy called Baz, Dan Barrowdale, who's in Pet Crow. Again, another band you should check out. They're really, really, really awesome as well. And that symbol, I absolutely loved that symbol it was fantastic it was really trashy it was really the fast attack 
sort of uh, really quick decay as well for the stuff we were playing. It was, it was perfect at the time. So it was still quite quiet because it was so thin. But I cracked it right around the bell, which is a really unusual place for it to, uh, to crack. But that was just because I was just hitting it too hard, I suppose. So what I did, I, I went for this one instead. Um, I initially went for a 12 inch. That sounded really good for a while, but I went for a 14. And the reason I went for a 14 is because as we've progressed as a band, we've actually progressed in terms of the, the loudness of the music that we play. We're a lot more kind of in your face now. And this, again, it has a really sharp attack, but quite a long decay as well. So it sounds more like an actual cymbal as opposed to a splash cymbal. So again, it actually records quite well. If I'm perfectly honest, I'm not 100% happy with the sound, but it does exactly what I need it to do. It cuts through and it sounds, it sounds good. It's not as good as I'd like, but it still sounds good. And the bell's really nice on it as well, so you can actually do quite a lot of accents on the bell. So, so really, for a pair of budget cymbals, it sounds, it sounds like a full kind of drum kit sound, really. Um, really, really happy with the both. Um, these would be the first things I'll probably upgrade, but apart from that, really happy with them at the minute, so don't need to. So because I actually play standing up, I have to have numerous different types of stand that can actually accommodate how I play. So we'll go through it from sort of, uh, sort of your right to left. So hi-hats, initially I started out again just with what I had. It's a really old, it's an old Mapex kind of real budget hi-hat stand. And it worked. Um, I'm, I'm not a massive, I'm not really precious about the gear I have, so I, I kind of hammered it. But it lived up for a bit, it lived to, lived to test the time for probably about, mm, about a year and a half before I actually, the actual foot pedal snapped on it. So I decided to upgrade. And I was in um, a local drum shop called Rattle and Drum in Derby. And I saw this. It was, it was 45 quid. Um, I don't know the exact model of it, but it's again a Mapex um, hi-hat stand. It's got single brace legs, which is great because I can fit it in my uh, cymbal bag a lot easier. It doesn't take up much space. Um, it's perfect height because obviously standing up, you're gonna need hi-hats higher. So again, for me, this is the perfect height to play open-handed with. And it was for 45 quid, absolute steal for me. So really happy with it. This stand I bought off a friend of mine called Owen. He doesn't play drums anymore, but it's again, just a normal, kind of double braced uh, Mapex stand just for a cymbal. I used to have a boom stand, but again, took up much too much space, a bit too heavy. So I got this and it does exactly what I need it to do. So, so there. This, my, the snare stand that I actually use for the floor tom, I actually use, do use a snare stand. I haven't got legs because legs wouldn't be tall enough for, for sort of the height that I need it to be. So this snare stand actually came from with the, the snare that I bought off Joe from Kovacs, check that. And this is one of the best snare stands I've ever, ever owned. It's a pearl one. It's got a, what they call a gyro lock system on it. So it means I can position this floor tom exactly the way I want it. I can have it even facing that way, facing over there, whatever. It's perfect and it holds it. It's, it's absolutely steady as a rock. So again, I really do love pearl hardware. Really, 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 really good stuff. And then the snare stand, there's a bit of a story about this one. So this is again a Stag. I'm not sponsored by Stag, by the way. But Stag, this is a, it's actually a concert snare stand. So again, for people in orchestras that stand up and play the snare drum, not many people do that. So it was really hard to find actually. And initially, the only ones that, well, Jamie originally f alerted me to it, and it was about 70 quid. But one came up on eBay for about 50, so I thought, yeah, I'd take the plunge. It's, it's not the best. Certainly not the best, it's, uh, it's quite fragile, but it means that I can actually raise it up to the height I need, because I do suffer from a bad back. So when I was having it a bit lower, I was leaning over a lot more, which caused a lot of pain in my back. Well, having it this high absolutely makes it bang on. So, so really, that's, that's, uh, there are all the stands I use, and because there's only one, two, three, four, I can fit them into a rucksack. So again, absolutely easy to carry about at any time. So absolutely brilliant. So because initially we started out as a well, pretty quiet band, if I'm honest, um, in terms of the sticks I use, these are, these are what we call flicks. So these are sort of like a, almost like a hot rod, but with plastic, uh, sort of nylon um, ends to them, and they all flick out, as you can see. So effectively, it disperses the sound that you would get with a stick to make it quieter. Originally, I actually started out with hot rods, which instead of them being plastic, they're actually wood and it wasn't really getting the right kind of sound out of the drums if I'm being perfectly honest so 
and decided to opt for these. And these are, in my opinion, the best grub, best alternative to drumsticks you can get. So because I, I kind of play them not how you're supposed to play them really, play them quite hard now. They do kind of flick up at the end, but for me again that actually adds to the sound. You get a really fat sound out of the floor tom, really fat sound out of the snare, and again on the cymbals they sound absolutely top notch. So I was actually sent a few pairs from um, from the chap that, that makes flicks. These are all sort of handmade in his own factory in Scotland. So massive thanks to him and just making these because they are an absolute lifesaver. So other accessories are, I've got this. This is a Meinl um, tambourine for the hi-hat. I call it my jingly jangly. And effectively what that does is just adds one extra sound when I'm hitting down on the hi-hat to either accent the, accent the snare kind of keep the beat going to kind of give it just that extra texture so sort of an extra different feel to it if you want to bring it down or even bring it back up and uh, to keep time from hitting the cymbal and again for such a small thing it makes a really what bit of a racket if I'm honest so so there we go that's me with all my accessories so the last thing I'm going to talk about is the heads I use so again I've tried loads of different heads throughout the years loads and loads and loads like Evans, Aquarian, Remo um, and I've actually settled on a company called Code. And Code are actually based in Leicester. And they, they're a relatively new company actually. And they make heads that are really, really affordable, but also sound absolutely brilliant. So shout out to those guys as well. So on the floor tom, I actually use a Code generator. So that's a twin ply. So again, to, to really give it out that kind of thud, that extra real, real nice th sort of thwack that we have on the kick drum, uh, the floor tom, sorry. It just makes it sound a lot more like a kick drum because it kind of balances those overtones and really makes it short and really quick tack. So again, makes it sound more like that low end thud that you get on a kick drum. Snare wise, this is a code DNA. This is a coated head. This is another twin ply head. It's kind of almost in comparison to something like say a Remo Ambassador. So something again, so a really, really sharp attack um, and something that's really got, it's again, it really mutes those overtones in your snare. And at the minute, I am kind of cheating. I am kind of cheating. I am still using O-rings. I'm a real big fan of a fat sounding snare. I tune this quite low, actually. It's low, me low medium tuning. And initially, when we started out, I really, I really enjoyed the sound of a real sharp crack up to a snare. But it was just too overbearing. It just didn't really fit the music, and it definitely didn't fit any mixes that we were doing as well. So decided to tune the, tune the uh, snare a lot lower, and actually using a wood and a much deeper snare actually makes the sound it sounds so much more full bodied and it fits in with the mix so much nicer so again really really good heads and the bottoms I don't actually know so let me just have a quick look uh, code the both code again both code DNA code DNA and code genetic so again really good single ply heads single ply for the bottom single ply for the snare crank them really high the floor tom is pretty much only just above the uh, the top head just to give it that, that extra thud and I use pure sound snare wires as well and again in my opinion the best the best name for, uh, for snare wires you cannot fault them pay a bit more for them but they just they last longer and they just sound absolutely fantastic so so there we go that's my uh, that's my drum run uh, drum rundown uh, with pretty much everything you need to know about them really without going into too much detail the one thing I will say is I am pretty bad for changing my snare heads I do need to change them they are quite battered if I'm honest but I like it so there we have it that's my drum rundown so again not a huge not a huge deal to it to be perfectly honest with you it's only as you can see it's really tiny but a lot goes into it and a lot of kind of planning and stuff so what I will say is if you've enjoyed this gear rundown, make sure to give us a like. Make sure you hit that notification bell if you really want to hear any more from us. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. So I've been Tom from School of Victory. Just want to say thanks ever so much for watching. Thanks a lot. See you next time.